I hope that you revised the last lecture. If you have not done it, please revise it. Okay, so that will help you to understand this lecture. So before I start this lecture, let us give a recap of the last one. Okay, so we learned what is an array. An array is a collection of elements stored in an adjacent memory. Then we learned the name of the array will give the first address. Then we learned name of the array is a constant pointer, hence it cannot be what changed. We also learned array subscript starts with zero and ends with what size minus one. It's also said if, if an array name is assigned to a pointer, the pointer and the array works in the same way. So with this, let's go to our next session. In this class, we will understand how to create an array, what are the challenges you are going to face, the next is how to use them in our problem solving, okay, yeah. So let's go back, I wrote here integer a of 5, correct, where at a of 5, we said like this, there is a pointer call a is created, then we said there are 5 blocks are created, all the 5 blocks are stored in adjacent memory, the first address will be stored in this. And it is a constant pointer. We said it is a constant pointer. You can't change this content. And we will identify this block as a of 0. Or you can also identify 0 of a also. 0 of what? a. Right? This is a of 1. You can also identify it as what? 1 of a also. a of 2. a of 3. And a of 4. What is inside by default it is stored? Garbage values. Correct? Right? Now, how many bytes have been allotted for this is the size of an array. What is the total memory allotted for this array is the size of the array multiplied by the data type of the array multiplied by the size of the data type of the array. That means here size of integer is what? 4. The 4. The total memory allotted is 5 into 4 is what? 20 bytes. Remember, you can't access here. You can't access outside. Okay. You can only access what within this. If you try to access outside, left or right, it will what? It will terminate your program. Now, if I say here instead of int, I can say here double. What will happen? If I say here double, the size of the array is going to be 5 into what? 8. That means totally 40 bytes will be allotted. What is the difference between last time and this time? This time you can store decimal values inside. This is a pointer of type double. Now the next is that means the data type of the array can be anything that the size will be dependent on the data type. Now the size of the array must be an integer. Be what an integer. It cannot be a float. It cannot be a double. It must be what an integer. Integer it should be. I can't say here 5.5. Not allowed. Only what an integer. The integer can be either a constant or a predefined constant. What is it? What do I mean by this? I can say like this. I can say the size of the array can be, I can write right now like this. I can say integer a of size. But the size is, I will get the size. You have one here. One is, you can say this is called a macro. Hash define size is 5. No equal to sign, no semicolon. Okay, no, no equal to say no. In this case, it's called preprocessor. It will be solved before compilation. In this place, the size will be supplied. 5 will be supplied before compilation. The other option is available for you. Instead of writing a constant, you can also write a constant variable here. I can't say here integer size is equal to 5. I can't say. I can't write here size. Because variables cannot be used as a size. Why? Because variables are evaluated only during runtime. Whereas my size of the array, memory for this array is created during compile time. Therefore, your size has cannot be a variable. Right now, it is not allowed. However, if you make here right now, your size as a constant, if you declare, it is allowed. In this case, you can't change the size during runtime. Because even though it looks like a variable, it's a constant. Since you declared as a constant, the compiler will replace during compile time. The size of the array can be either a literal constant or a symbolic constant, macro, symbolic constant, or it is a constant variable. Constant what? Variable. But it has to be as integer, okay? Once you declare a constant, you can't change the size. 
Okay, this is the first thing. The next we saw here, if I declare an array of size 5, by default it is garbage, that's what we said, okay. Now I put here right now 7, 4, 5, 2, if I write like this, 7 is here, 4 is here, 5 is here, 2 is here and 0 is here, sir, 0 is here, correct. Because once you initialize at the line of declaration, remaining all will become 0. Done. Next. Next here. I am going to write here right now in this place is a of 4 is equal to a of 1. By this, what you are doing, you are copying the 4 here. a of 1 is 4. 4 is copied here. You can assign. You can say integer x is equal to a of 2. By this, you copy the 5 in x. After copying, they have no relation. Remember. You can say pointer a is equal to 40. Okay. So, by saying star a is equal to 40, what you are going to do? a is 1 on 5, 40 will be stored here. Sir, can I say a is equal to 40? No. Why? a is a pointer. It cannot store what a value. Second is a constant pointer. It can't store in another address also. It can't store in another address also. Okay. The next is here. You can also initialize an array. You can also initialize an array one one member. I can write like this. I create an integer array. Not necessary. It depends on your data. You need to create. Okay. I put an array. By this, I make a block. Five blocks. It can be any size. Okay. I write five because I don't want to draw many blocks here. Five nine three seven one thirty one. Correct. So one one five is here, right? This is a of 0, this is a of 1, this is a of 2, a of 3 and a of 4. What is inside we said? Garbage. I can also say like this, a of 0 is equal to 10. By this 10 is stored here. No, sir, I want to scan the value for it. I can scan. How to scan? I can say scan a percentage d. I want to scan a value for this block. Okay, what to do? If I say a of 1, what I am doing, I am talking about the content. But when I scan, what I need to provide? Address. And A of 1 will give me 119. It will keep on storing in 119. Correct. And the 20. So, you can assign a value directly. You can scan it. Okay. No, sir, I want to scan all the blocks. Okay. Simple thing. If you want to scan all the blocks, what I should do? If I want to scan the first block, I will put A of 0. Correct now. The subscript A of 0. Second time if you want to, what I should put here? If a second time you want to put a value for the second one, in the place of 0, I should put what? 1. If you want next time, what I should do? A of 2. Correct? Next is A of 3 and A of 4. Therefore, what do you need to do? Here you need to supply a variable. So, what is the variable I can supply? Where the variable should hold, first time 0, second time 1, third time 2. Correct? Okay. What do you do? Put A of i. What is the i value should be? i value from for i is equal to 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus. But sir, you put a variable inside, yeah, it's a subscript. Subscripts are evaluated during runtime only. Whereas what cannot be variable, I said, the size cannot be a variable. Size cannot be what a variable. Remember, size cannot be variable. But what can be variable? The subscript can be variable. Subscript can be what a variable. Okay, sir, in this case, now that means in this, this program is always going to take an input of five elements. Okay, now first element will store a of zero, second will be a one, then it is two, then it is three, and it is what? Then it is one. Okay. Stored like that. You can't take more. Yeah, you can't take more than five elements. Therefore, what do you do? If you want to take more elements, create a bigger size of 50. That means size became 50. But sir, do I need to take 50 element every time? No. In this case, you have a solution. What do you need to do? You want to take only 5 elements in this? You want to fill only the 5 elements? Uh, what do you do? Simple thing. Put here in this place. And what is the n? Oh, okay. Integer n. Scan the n before. Printer. Enter the number of elements. Then you say scanner percentage d. What I should write and then correct. Then. So I entered the elements. My size is 50, but I am entering only 5 elements because my n is 5 only. 
if you want to enter in the same and enter now sir i want to print all of them okay if you want to print the first element what i should do if you want to print the first element i'm going to say here printf percentage d slash t what i should put i put it have a of zero first element right second element if you want a of one right so what i will put in this place i my i would vary from for i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus, correct? When i is 0, a of 0 will give you a 10. When i is 1, a of 1 will give you 20. When i is 2, a of 2 will give you what? 15. When i is 3, a of 3 will give you what? 17. When i is 4, a of 4 will give you what? 25. I got all the elements got printed, sir. All the element got what? Printed. Now the important point you need to remember, the first point you need to remember, okay. Whenever you want to see all the blocks of the array once, you must have a single for loop. You must have a single what? For loop, okay. Whenever you want to see all the blocks of the array once, you must have a single for loop. I want to give you five rules, okay. What are the five rules? The first rule is, Whenever you want to see all the elements of the array once, you must have a single for loop. Okay. The second rule is whenever you want to modify an element of an array, you must know the index of the element. The third rule is if you want to move the elements of the array, create an empty location. Create an empty location. Fourth rule is whenever you want to see multiple elements of the array at a time, but you want to see all the elements once, you want to see all the elements once, but at a time you want to see multiple elements, then use multiple variables in a single loop. Use multiple variables in a single loop. The fifth point to remember. Whenever you want to see all the elements more than once, use a nested loop. Use what a nested loop. Okay. See then, the next rule is whenever you're using indexes, the smaller L index must be greater than or equal to zero, and the larger index must be less than the number of elements. These are the okay. rules of to re to be remembered whenever you are dealing with an array. Okay. The first rule. What is the first rule is? Whenever you want to see all the elements of the array once, you must have a single what? For loop. Single what? For loop. Okay. So let us see here in this case. We will, I will explain this through a program. Okay. I am going to give you some output on the screen. Write it down in your notebook and get the output then you will understand better. Okay. A of i modulus 2 is not equal to 0, then x plus equal to a of i. If i modulus 2 is not equal to 0, y plus equal to a of i. Closing the brace, I am going to say print up percentage d, percentage d, x comma y. Okay. So, can you please write this down and get the output on your notebook, then we will verify. I hope you verified it, uh, you have made an effort, okay. So, let us see what you have done it, then I will see. What we said was, I have created an array, A, and I put what here, five blocks I created, all are adjacent memory. This is A of 0, A of 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 7, 8, 15, 11, 2. The first address is right? yeah, this is what we studied. Now, create, I created two variables. x is 0 and y is also what? 0. i is 0. 0 is less than 5. Condition is true. a of 0 is how much it is what? 7. 7 modulus 2. How much I get? 1. 1 is not equal to 0. Condition is true x plus equal to a of i x became what i what is i right now 0 0 refers what the index 
0 modulus 2, how much I get what? 0. 0 is not equal to 0 is false, I skip. I go for i plus plus. i became how much it is what? 1. A of 1, what is A of 1 is? 8. 8 modulus 2 is what? 0. False. 1 modulus 2, how much I get? 1. Not equal to 0 condition is true. Y plus equal to A of i, how much it became what? I became 2. 2 is less than 5. A of 2 is how much it is what? 15. 15 modulus 2, how much I get what? 1. I add with x. 7 plus 15, how much I get what? 22. I, I is 2. 2 modulus 2 is how much it is what? 0. 0 means skip. Go for i plus plus i became 3. 3 is less than 5. Condition is true. A of 3. What is A of 3 is what? 11. 11 modulus 2 is how much it is what? 1. Is a odd number. Condition is true. X plus A, A of 33. I is how much it is 3. 3 modulus 2 is 1. Condition is true. Y plus equal to A of i. How much it became what? 19. I became 4. 4 is less than 5. A of 4. How much it is 2? 2 modulus 2 is 0. False. Now, i is 4. 4 modulus 2 is 0. False. i became 5. False. i came out. My x is how much it is what? 33. y is how much what? 19. Whenever you are dealing with an array, if you want to refer the element, use a of i. If you want to refer the index, use i. Your index can only be an integer. Your size also can only be what an integer. Remember. Okay. Your index cannot be a floater double, but the array can be floater double. Remember that. Okay. Now the next here, sir. Whenever you want to modify an element of an array, you must know the index. You want to convert this 15 to 25. Simple thing. What you have to do? A of 2 is equal to 25. You have to write like this. You can't say here x is equal to A of 2. I can say here x is equal to A of 2. And then I say x equal to a of 2 means what you did in x what you did you copied what like 15 for example in the previous example 15 right now you write x is equal to 25 oh if i write x is equal to 25 this will be 25 this will never be known therefore whenever you want to change the element of an array you must know the index of the element index you must know the index of the element okay till the different what change okay remember this yeah so once again I would like to remind you, whenever you want to access an element, use A of i. Whenever you want to access an index, use what i. Got it? Yeah. Now, let us go and solve one problem. Okay. The problem is very simple. What you need to do? You have to input n elements. You have to input what? n elements for an array. Input n elements. You want to get n here. Okay. You put size 50 and take n from the user. Input n elements and then what you need to do? You need to find, what are the things you need to find? First is, you need to find the sum of the elements. Okay. Second is, the average of the elements. Third is, the number of elements, number of elements, above average above average and below average not the average okay number of elements above average and what below okay now look at this now you want to find the sum of the elements right if you want to find the sum of the element do i need to see each block of the array yes without seeing each block i can't find the sum right the fourth in order to find the sum of the elements of the array, you must have a loop. You must have a loop here, okay? Single for loop, okay? Now, what is an average? Average is nothing but sum divided by n. Now, tell me, if I want to divide the sum by n, how many times I need to do? Once or many times? Only once. Whatever you want to do once has to be where? Outside the loop. How many times I need to find the average? Only once. When I can find the average? After finding the sum. After finding the sum, right? Next. Number of elements above average, number of elements below average. That means each element has to be compared with what? With an average. If you want to compare each element with an average, what do you need it? For loop. Now, when you see an element, what do you do? You compare what is the average value with the element which is existing. If the element which is existing greater than what the average and the increase above average by 1, 
if the element is less than you, you what below average by one correct okay go ahead solve the problem and come so if you like my session kindly share subscribe and like so we spoke we are declaring an array so five correct i have 50 you can take n elements from the user now if i want to take a um, find the sum and the average my element can also be a float or a double right correct next is what i should do i need an index find the sum sum will be of type what double why sum i need the average and then i need two counters what are the two counters one is above average other one is what below my count is not going to be in fraction correct now now what should be the initial value of sum what is the sum is what i need to keep on adding in my mind whenever i see an element right if you want to keep on adding the successive addition whenever i see an element above average will increase the counter by one right now so that means what i'll do above is equal to zero below is equal to what zero yeah so now i first is i need to what input process and the output remember input process and the output my now my input is not only one my input is what n n inputs are there therefore first of all i need to know what is n is how many input i need to take printer enter number of elements Scanner percentage D or and what and correct right for integer I have a repeated I is equal to zero I is less than n I plus plus what I should do I need to enter that many elements right enter enter a value I would have done initialize directly, okay. So only for this program, I'm going to do rest call next time. Mm -hmm. I go directly scanner percentage LF. See, remember because my arrays of type what this, right? And what A of I, correct? Done. Now I need to find the sum. I could have done here only, but I'm purposely I'm taking it to see input. I always keep separate, process I always keep separate, output is separate, okay. These three. Now, what is the process? I need to find the sum of the elements. How to find the sum? I is equal to 0. All the elements I need to see, right? Now, if you want to find the sum, I need to see all the elements in the block, right? Now, and I plus plus. Correct? What I need to do? Sum plus equal to A of I. Right now. Then what I should do? Average. What is average? Sum upon N. That I need to do only once. No, the for average is equal to sum upon n. Now, what is the above average and below average? The above average is what? The elements which is greater than the average, other one is what? The element that is less than average, right? Now, that's what I'm going to do for. I need to see each block. I need to see whether it is above or below. So, 0, i is less than n i plus plus what i should do now if a of i is greater than what if the current element is greater than the average what i should do above plus plus increase by one right now don't say else if you put else what will happen it will also include the element which is average because you want to the else part for two reasons one is it can be less or it can be equal the fourth i am i want only elements below average if it is a of i or a of i is less than what average what i should do below plus plus now i go here so print sum is equal to percentage lf slash n and average is equal to percentage lf a ah, then i can put it slash and put here 
Now what I should write sum comma average. So we enter. What I should do above average. So percentage D, right? Slash in below average. Percentage D comma above. Run. Enter the number of elements. I entered right now, let's say five elements, right? And I put into the value, I put here five, sixty, nine, seven, or is it thirty-nine between sorry, one and four. See the average is what sum is fifty-six, average is eleven, and this is this. Okay, one and one element is above and four elements are below average. Okay. Remember, if you want to see whenever you are processing your array, you have to see first, are you seeing all the blocks of the array? If you are seeing all the blocks of the array once, you must have a for loop. What you must have a for loop. Remember that. Without that, you can't find, you can't visit all the elements. You can't visit all the elements. Okay. Now, I am going to give another problem for you to solve by yourself. Okay, I am not going to solve that problem. Okay, you are going to solve it. It is similar, but you need to solve it. Okay, the question is this. Okay, so you are going to input n elements. Now, what you need to do? You need to find the following first. Okay, this is the input. What is the output I want? Okay. First is you need to find the sum, then you need to find the average, okay, we wrote it. Then you need to find the variance and then you need to find the standard deviation. Mathematically some formula is written like this, sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi every element okay for you to understand here i put ai every element needs to be added from 1 to n but here remember my array subscript starts with 0 ends with size minus 1 okay what is the average average is nothing but sum upon n it is denoted as x bar what is the variance variance is nothing but each element needs to be subtracted from the average and you need to find the square of it and then you need to find the sum of the whole thing, 1 to n. The whole sum needs to be divided by n. This is called variance. Each element needs to be subtracted. See here, you each element you added directly. Here, what you have to do? Each element has to be subtracted from the average. Then you need to find the square of it, and you need to find the sum of them. That sum needs to be divided by n. That will be variance. Sir, in sum, I saw all the elements. What I did, I directly added. In average, I don't need to see all the elements. In variance, what I did, I saw all the elements, I subtracted from the average, I squared it and found it right now. Divided the whole thing by n, right? Correct? What is standard deviation is root of variance. Root of what? Variance. Okay. Yeah. See what is? Yeah. Root of variance is called as what? Standard deviation. Okay. Now, what you do is apply the principle. Whenever I want to see all the elements of the array, I must use a single what? For loop. Right. Okay. Remember that. Okay. Now, look at this. Now, if I give you an input number of elements is 5, and if I enter elements is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The sum should be 15, 
the average must be 3 and the variance must be approximately to be 2 point something. Okay, so I said I will not solve, but let us see whether we solve. Okay, <coughs> first is what I said input n elements done, right? What you wrote before. I need to find the sum. Okay, I put a some variable and then I find the average. Now, what I need to do next is what? What is this variance we saw? Ai minus what? X bar the whole square. Ai minus X bar the whole square, right? Now, how to write it? Ai minus X bar. Ai A of i minus average X bar whole square. How to write whole square? You can call the power function. Okay, you can call if you want, call the power. Otherwise, you can also simply say multiply. Since it's a square, you can directly say a of i minus what? Hmm? You need to find the summation of this right now. I created a variable called variance. Variance plus equal to summation of this. Now, I need to divide the whole sum by n. How many times? Only once. Therefore, what I am going to do after finding variance equal to variance by n. What is that standard deviation? SD is equal to root of variance. What I should write? SQRT of variance. Right? And to find the sum, average, what I need to do next is what? Variance and what standard deviation? What is it? Now oh, both are double. So for I'm going to put what LF. Both are double. I'm going to put LF. Variance. Standard deviation done. I'm going to put right now like this. I am going to call. I need to include mathradish. Okay, I am going to include mathradish. So, if I give in hash, say okay. I am going to stop it. I don't want the warnings. Hash include. Number of elements I put five and enter the values one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to say here sum is fifteen, average is three, variance is two, standard is one point. Yeah. Remember, whenever you want to see each block of the array once, you must have a for loop. See, in summation, I found it. I was seeing, sorry, in scanning, I was putting each block on an element. I, I made a loop. In summation, I found, I was seeing each element. I need to add each element properly. Here also the same. Okay. Now, whenever you write a program, now, don't do this. Okay, You will waste a lot of time here. Okay. To avoid this, I tell you a simple solution to you. Whenever you are solving a problem, see directly give a value. Okay. And directly give, let's say in this case, I put 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5. And give an value. And test your program. Is it working or not properly? Then what do you do? Then you remove the comment and run, take the value from the user. Okay. Because if you keep on taking, you are keep on feeding the value. If you take a longer time, sometimes you get frustrated by that when you make a mistake. Okay. So for avoid that. Yeah. Cool. So let's go to the next one. So I would like to write it this. Second principle. What is the second principle? The first principle I said, if you want to see all the elements once, you must have a for loop right now. So the second principle is whenever you want to shift the elements of the array, 
create an empty location. Create an empty what? Location. Okay. What is the meaning of this? Let us see. Okay. Whenever you want to modify an element of an array, sorry, whenever you want to shift the elements of an array, you must create an empty location. This is what my array is. I am taking an array and this is what my array. What I wanted right now, I want to rotate the array clockwise once. I want to rotate the array clockwise once. What do I mean by rotate? This is my array elements right now. 7, 15, 11, 2, 9. Rotate the array clockwise once. That means when I rotate clockwise once, I am assuming the array is in a circular form. So this is A of 0, this is A of 1, A of 2, A of 3 and A of 4 right now. The array name can be anything, huh? not A necessarily. Okay. Rotate the array shift. That means I need to rotate the array clockwise once. That means if I rotate the array clockwise once, what is going to come? The output is supposed to be 9. 7, 15, 11, 2. Right. Hmm. I rotated it clockwise once. Now look at this. Now this is what the input. This is the expected what? Output, right? Now what is the observation I make here? The observation says like this. See. Every element came one step forward except the last element. See, 7 came in the place of 15, 15 came in the place of 11, and 11 came in the place of 2, 2 came in the place of what? Correct. Now my challenge is this. What is my challenge is? If I say, a of 1 is equal to A of 0, the 7 will come in the place of 15. I agree. Right. So, I, I will tell you the 9 came to the last first bit. So, if I say A of 1 is equal to A of 0, what is going to happen? The 7 is going to replace the 15. By that, I am going to lose what? The 15. Now, that means what I should do? Simple thing. Create an empty block right now. I will create. See, every element came one step ahead except this element right now. Is an exception. So, take the element out. In the exception, keep it out. I will keep it out. Simply say here in this case is x is equal to a of 4. By this conceptually I have taken the 9 out but actually no. 9 will be there only. But you copied the 9 there in x. Okay. Now conceptually it is vacant but actually is existing. Now what do you do? In A of 4, that means this got vacant. In A of 4, I am going to put A of 3. By this, what I brought here in this place 2. Now, in A of 3, what I have to bring what? A of 2. By this, what I brought here what? 11. Sorry. In A of Two, I need to bring what a of one. But what I brought what fifteen done. In a of one, I need to put what a of zero. By I brought what seven. Correct. Right. Now in a of zero, what I should put the nine, which is existing in what. In this, in this process, I saw all the elements. How many times? Once. 
But in the process, these two are an exceptional statements. They are different than the rest of the statements, right? The what you can do, this you can keep it out, this you can keep it out, this you can put it in the loop. What is it loop is what it's saying. If this is i, this is i minus 1. If this is i, this is i minus 1. This i is i. Whereas my i should start with what? 4. The four, what I should do? Simple thing. I don't need this to keep. I want to put a loop here. I want to put a loop. What is a loop I want to put? i is equal to 4. i should be greater than 0. i minus 1. Why? Because 0 is dealt separately. In this case, what to do? Simply write a of i is equal to what? a of i minus 1. You have n element? Oh, very good. Say n minus 1. You start with what? n minus 1. Remember, input process. This is your process. See, only one statement. I don't need a brace. This is your process. This outside, this outside. Now, what I need to do? Output. Output is what? You need to put a 4 again. For i 0, i is less than what? n, i plus plus. Print that. Percentage d slash d. What I should write? A of. That's it. Done. Got it? Yeah. Okay, I hope that you have understood this and with this you will solve one more problem. Okay, no? You will solve what? One more problem with this concept. Okay, what is the concept is what? Whenever you want to, whenever you want to what? Shift the elements. Whenever you want to shift the elements, create an empty location. Create an empty what? Location. Got it? Okay. Done. So now, I am going to give you a problem. What is the problem is what? I have been given an array. You need to delete an element in the array. I have been given, I put array at 10, but my number of n is 7. So my n is what in this example? The size of the array is 10, but number of elements is 5. I want to delete an element. I want to delete an element at the index 2. This is 0. 1, 2. You want to delete an element, you can't delete just simply like that because these are adjacent elements. You can never delete an element from an array. You can only what? Override. The, what do you need to do? Simple thing. If you after deleting the element at 2, the number of elements will become how much? What? 4. Correct? What I should do? That means here 7 needs to be kept as it is 8. But in the place of 11, what should come to? In the place of 2, what should come? Three. The number of elements should become what? 4 now. Okay. <laughs> Write a code. Write what are code. Okay. So let us understand the rule number 5. Okay. With the problem, we will understand. So I am going to put something on the screen right now. Okay. Take your notebook and write first, okay? And then we will learn through a mistake. So this is my array. So I'm taking an integer array of size 10 is equal to 8, 4, 9. My number of elements in the array is 5. Okay. Now I'm going to write like this, okay? So I just please write on your notebook. And see what is the output is coming. Okay, for integer i is equal to 0, mm -hmm. i is less than n, mm -hmm. i plus plus. See, that means I am going to see all the elements of the array once. Okay, I will put a and I wrote inside like this if. A of i is greater than A of i plus 1, i plus 1. In this case, I am going to swap integer t is equal to A of i. A of i is equal to A of i plus 1. 
and a of pi plus 1 is equal to b. Close the brace. After writing this, I am going to get write the output on the screen. Okay, so this is a. Please watch it carefully and let the output. I want to see the output for okay i integer i is equal to zero i is less than n i plus plus and i would say print percentage d slash d i put what in here done please get the output on the screen what i write it and get it you will learn something, okay? So if you are not learned, just I am coming back to explain to you, okay? So make sure that you write that these are the elements, okay? And this is the code needs to be executed by you. This process is happening, and I want the output here. I hope you tried it, okay? Let us see how you are done it. Let me see whether whether you done it right or wrong, okay? Go there see here this is what i write it okay for my understanding i put it like this this is what my array is right now so eight four nine three two this is a index number zero index number one two three four correct now i want to execute the code i is zero zero is less than and n is 5 condition is true a of 0 is greater than a of 1 8 is greater than 4 condition is true 4 comes here 8 comes here i became 1 1 is less than 5 a of 1 is 8 8 is greater than 9 condition is what false i became 2 2 is less than 5 a of 2 is 9 9 is greater than 3 condition is true i brought the 3 here i brought the 9 right that's all i became 4 so i became 3 3 is less than 2 condition is true a of 3 is greater than a of 4 condition is true i'm swapping 9 with 2. now i became 4 i became 4 4 is less than 5 condition is true. A of 4 is going to be compared with A of 5. Is A of 5 existing? No. It is there, the memory is there, but some other value might be stored. It may be garbage, it can be 0. It would have been in this example, it will be 0. Why? Because you initialize at the line of declaration, the next block will be what? 0. In this case, what would happen? 9 is greater than 0 condition is true. Therefore, 0 comes here and 9 goes here. That means now the 9 is no more going to be considered. Okay. Now, now I finish I became 5, false I came out. When I came out, I'm printing the array. I got the output what in this case 48320. Right. Why it has happened? Why it has what happened? The reason for this happening is because you have violated a rule you have violated the rule what is the rule we said whenever you are using index the smaller index must be less than greater than or equal to what zero and the larger index should be what in this case less than what the number of elements less than the number of elements here what has happened okay what has happened when i was zero fine when I was 1 is fine because when I was 1, this is 1, this is 2. When I was 2, this is 2, this is 3. When I was 3, this is 3, this is 4. When I was 4, this is 4 and this is 5. This is 5. Because you ask permission for you. Here you said i is less than n. Whereas here you are using what an i plus 1. That means the larger index Who's the largest index? This is not less than the number of elements, is greater than. Therefore, what you should have done in this case is if you want to prevent this, you should always come check who is the larger index here. 
the larger index must be what the less than number of element that means here what i should write what instead of writing this i should written i plus one is less than number of in this case what will happen when i was three three plus one is four four is less than five condition is true therefore three is going to be compared with four fine when i became four 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 is less than 5, false will come out. Therefore, my 9 will remain in the same place. Therefore, remember, whenever you are using indexes, the larger index must be less than the number of elements and the smaller index must be greater than or equal to what? 0. Okay. Understand this. Okay. Now, okay. So, by executing this code, what I achieved? This is what the output I got in my notebook. Okay. It was 4, then 8, then 9, and this is 3, this is 2, this is 9. Yes, sir. You saw all the elements how many times? Once. Every time, what you are doing now? When you, when you saw the element, you compared the current element with the next element. If the current element is greater than the next element, what did you do? You swapped. By doing that, what you achieved? You push the largest element to the last place. You push the largest element to the last place. Correct. Now, if you do it again, what will happen? Let's say the same code I'm going to execute. See, you saw all the elements once, you need a single for loop. Correct. Now you are going to do again. 4 is greater than 8, condition is false. 8 is greater than 3, condition is what? True. 8 is greater than 2. 8 is greater than 9, yes. Like again, 4 is greater than 3, 4 is greater than 2, 4 is greater than 8 and 9. 3 is greater than 2, 3 is greater than 4, 8, 9. So, I saw all the elements, how many times I saw? Four times. First time what I did, I, I pushed the largest element to the last. Second time what I did, I pushed the second largest element to the last. Third time what I do, I did the third largest element to the last. Then I got the fourth largest element, right? That means every time I was pushing one element to the last in that corresponding position, correct? That means the same code needs to be repeated. Same code needs to be repeated. So, my question again to you. You saw all the elements how many times? Four times. If you want to see all the elements once, what I need? A single for loop. If you want to see all the elements four times, what I need to do? I need a nested loop where the inner loop will tell the number of times what I need to execute out. Therefore, in this case, what you will do? You will repeat the same procedure. What I need to do here in this case is put a for. integer j is equal to 1 j is less than what less than n minus 1 why n minus 1 four times you have to see why four times five elements four times why because the fifth time automatically this element gets again and j plus plus open up plus 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 yeah I need to count four times. That's it. Fourth time, I need to stop it. Yeah, got this. So one, right? Now look at this. If you look at the code, what happens? If you look at this, the first time I push the largest element. Second time when I come, do I need to compare eight with nine? No need. Third time when I come, do I need to compare four with 8 and 8 with 9, no need. Fourth time, do I need to compare this? No need, right? That means every time I can reduce one iteration, correct? Every time I can reduce one iteration, correct now? So, therefore, what I'm going to do in this place, instead of writing here, see, first time, I need to run n minus 1 time. Second time, I need to run what? n minus 2 time. Therefore, i plus 1 less than n is same or equal to what? i is less than n minus 1. Correct now. So, in this case, first time I need an n minus 1, second time n minus 2. 
that means I'm going to write n minus j. Why? Because first time when I is j is 1, n minus 1, when j is 2, n minus 2, that means that I'm going to stop comparing, stop comparing, stop comparing. Again, if you want to see the elements more than once, you must have a nested loop where the outer loop will tell how many times you are going to see the elements. Inner loop will help you to see the elements. Okay. This is called this is called bubble sort. This is called as what? Bubble sort. What is sorting? Arranging them in ascending or in descending. So this is sorted in ascending. I want to sort in descending. Okay, don't worry. What I should do? If you want to sort in descending, first I'm going to push what the smallest element, right? Now, so what to do? Instead of putting this, put the eyes there. That's it. Whoa, whoa. Got it? Understand this? Any questions? Any queries? Okay. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to give you another problem. So you can solve, what is the problem, see. So now, whatever that we have done before, everything you need to apply here, okay. It's not something that, okay, for this, only this rule. Everything you need to apply. What are the rules we spoke so far? First is what? To see all the elements once, you need a single loop, correct? Second, what we said, if you want to interchange, if you want to modify an element of an array, you must know the index, correct? Third is what we said, if you want to uh, move the elements, create an empty location in the array, correct? Fourth, what we said, if you want to what, see multiple elements at the same time, but you want to see all the elements once, then what we said, what create a multiple variable in a single loop. The fifth rule, what we said, whenever you are using an index, a smaller index should be what? Less than the number of elements, and uh, sorry, smaller index must be greater than zero, and the larger element should be what? Larger index should be less than the number of elements, correct? Sixth, what we said, if you want to see the elements more than once, you need a nested loop. You need what a nested loop, okay? Keep this in mind. So, I am going to give you a list of elements 8, 15, 7, 2, 1. What you are going to do? You are going to write a code to bring the smallest element to the first place. So that means here, to first of all, to find the smallest element, you need to go through all the elements once. Correct. Then you need to, you are interchanging the smallest element to the first. Therefore, you must know what the index of the smallest element and the index of the first element. Right? First element is zero. The index of the smallest element you need to trace it. You need to swap them. That's it. Okay. That means after doing this statement, what is the output I should get? I should get the output. What in this case is 2, 15, 7, 8. Stop the video and solve the problem. I hope that you made an effort. Let us see. Okay. So if I want to interchange the first element with the smallest element, first of all, I need to go through all the elements. Therefore, I need a okay. from where I should start integer i is equal to 0, i is less than n, i plus plus. Now, what I need to do, I need to what? I need to know which is the smallest element. That means what I need to remember so far, whatever the smallest element I have seen, I need to remember. Remembering the element is not going to help me, but remembering the index will help me. Why? Because to interchange it, I need to have the index, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say here right now, in this places, I'm going to say here to remember the index. I'm going to say here in this places, minimum is equal to zero. Why you keep zero? Because the element at the zeroth index also can be the minimum, right now. With that assumption, I am going to go through. If you want to go through what I need to do, I need to compare what is there in my mind. If A of A is an array, say A of M is greater than A of I. M is 0. A of 0 is greater than A of 0. Condition is what? Sir, I don't want to compare with itself. Okay, fine. Then what do you do? Simple things. Now, writing this start from M plus. 
1. m is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. That means first time we will compare what? You took the first element as a small element to remember, right? So what do you do? a of m, m is what right now? 0. a of 0 is greater than a of 15. Condition is what? a of 0 is a of 1 is how much it is? 15. 8 is greater than 15. Condition is what? False. I became 1. I became 2. 2 is less than n. A of 0 is greater than A of 2. Condition is true. Therefore, I am going to make m is equal to what? I. My m became 2. I plus plus. A of A of what? A of 2 is greater than A of 3. Condition is true. My m became 2. I became 4. 4 is less than 5. A of 3 is greater than A of 4. Condition is false. Okay, come out. I became 5, I came out. When I come out, I need to interchange what? These two. And interchange, what I should interchange? The element at the mth index right now needs to be interchanged with the first index. The product I'm going to write. Integer t is equal to a of 0. In a of 0, I should put what? a of m. In a of m, Problem. Then put a for loop and print it out. Okay. That's fine, sir. Now, by doing this, what you have achieved, you brought the smallest element to the first. Now, let's ignore the two. Now, go here and find the next smallest element and put it here. If you want to find the next smallest element, remember, I don't need to compare here. I need to start comparing from here. The what I'm going to do. Simple thing I'm going to do. In this place, m is equal to 1. When I say m is equal to 1, what will happen? Integer i is equal to m plus 1. m plus 1 is 2. a of m is a of 1 is 15. 15 is greater than 7. Condition is what? True. Therefore, my m became 2. m became 2. i became 3. 3 is less than. a of 2 is 7. Is greater than 8. Condition is false. i became 4. 4 is less than. By a of 2 is greater than a of 4. Condition is what? False. I became 5. False. I came out. Now what I need to do? I need to interchange with what? 1 and 1. That means if you want to bring the next element, what I should do again? So this has been done. It's been brought here 7. Now here 15 went. Now if I want to bring the next smallest element here, what I should do? Now my m should become what? 2. From 2, go for all. Correct? Then 3, go for all. Right now. That's what I'm going to do in these cases. Simply, I'm going to put a 4 because I saw elements more than once. Integer j is equal to first time 0, j is less than j. n minus 1 also will do. Why? Because last element will settle automatically. In this place, instead of writing this, instead of writing this, what do you need to do? Make it m is equal to what? j. And wherever he wrote here, here what? J. What I wrote what? J. But it, this is called selection sort. This is called selection sort. Selection what? Sort. Put a for loop and print it. Okay. Yeah. You type it and see. If you have not understood, try to understand. Okay. If you have some queries, just put the comments here. I am ready to reply back.